and welcome to Steelers Today, very late in the day. It's very late Thursday night, and the Steelers beat the Eagles. I never tracked preseason scores. I already forgot. Oh, it's up there on the board. 24-16, right? 24-16. It's, it's, it's a preseason outcome, and at the same time, Dale, everything that was good that happened happened from the second team onward. For the most part. Am I wrong? I mean, it's tough to say what's the, the first team and what's the second team when they've got five or six starters on defense who aren't out there. Uh, you know, you still haven't seen the starting offensive line for the most part. You see pieces. De- defensive line. Pieces of it. You don't even see it. The, the entire starting defensive line. You know, it, it's so it's 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 getting pieced together, although Mike Tomlin did say that he plans, he, he plans to play Ben Roethlisberger in next week's preseason game. Yeah. I guarantee you, if Ben Roethlisberger's on the field, you're going to see the rest of that first team offensive line. Oh, they're not putting Ben out there. <laughs> the, they're not putting Ben out there with the B team. And you team. can also yeah. bet that Joe Hayden and, and some of these other guys. Well, it's the only out. game, really. Right. Let's not forget that for the rest of the NFL, there were only these three preseason games. You never use your starters in the in the Carolina game. That's just tradition. And you're going to see the real players. However, let's take what we can from from what we saw here. Uh, Impressive, right off the bat. There's no way we can skip past Wayne Haskins and go to somebody else. He's been he's been this though, all the time. What you've seen in practice and at times, yes. Other times, not so much. And and he's a whether we you know Mike Tomlin talked about Joe Flacco and the Steelers are out there playing cover two and Joe Flacco is going to eat that up. That's what Dwayne Haskins is going to see. And I've seen him in, in, in camp when they play cover two against them all. He knows how to beat that, throw the ball you know, in this open spot down the sideline. Mm-hmm. There it is. Or the, yeah, work your way to the side. The quick throws yeah. over the middle, those kind of things. So I'm not going to you know, crown Dwayne Haskins as some kind of great uh, quarterback at this point. Has he been intriguing? Sure. Has he been better than Mason Rudolph? I can't. Oh come I, on! I'm telling you, I don't. I don't know that you can say that. If I he's just did. Definitively better than Mason Rudolph. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I don't think so. In camp, I don't. I'm think not so. talking no. about who's gonna. Okay. I'm, I'm talking right. about not just a few open camps that people have, that, that that have been fans in. I'm talking about the entire off season. No, no, no. I've I, seen no, Mason. Yeah, Mason has forty had, practices already. Yeah, Mason showed well in OTAs. Showed well in mini camp. And no one saw those. Like that, those were right. not. Those so they didn't not, happen. Well, yeah. I did. I saw yeah. it. Yeah, and 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 these things, these things are, are visible to us. Uh, and and I did say and write good things about Mason Rudolph. However, however, momentum built. Mike oh, Tomlin absolutely. himself yeah. says that what matters is playing in stadiums. He wants to see how guys react, even to a completely innocuous setting like this, where it was only half filled, and, and the half that did watch barely paid attention. Uh, because it was only 5,000 degrees here, and a lot of these people walked over the parking lot from the Phillies-Dodgers game earlier in the day, and you could tell they were just, like, they're roasting. Uh, but they they showed what they can do to some extent here. You can agree that Haskins outperformed Mason tonight. Yeah, but I don't know that it was a fair assessment now, of Mason Rudolph because be. they, were moving, they were moving the ball, and they had two holding penalties that put him, you know, in, in, when Rudolph was in, in, in the surprise. running game, yeah. you know, it wasn't any through any fault. Was in. I thought he had the best pass of the night. Yes, he did. The thirty-three yard pass to to, to Deontay Johnson. Yeah, it was pretty. Um, you know, it was a perfectly placed football. So I don't. It doesn't matter who's two and who's three in the grand scheme of things. And there's that because if Ben Roethlisberger is healthy, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be on the field. They're not going to. They, they showed us tonight by making a trade during this game. For Joe Schober, yeah. that they're not punting on this season. Now, what what matters, I, and I, this this part we're going to agree on completely. The, the two versus the three in the quarterback thing makes for great talk show fodder. Yeah. But when we get to Buffalo, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. It, one will be a- a- active, the other will be inactive. That's the only one's difference. One's going to be holding the clipboard, yeah. and one's not. Uh, so let's talk about someone else who performed well. Pick one. I thought Anthony McFarland had a, had a very good game. Ran well. Uh, ran, ran hard. Ran hard. Yeah. Caught the ball on the one little waggle play yep. uh, with, with Haskins out and, there. But that also, Dale, is something that we've seen. This is not Anthony McFarland didn't show up tonight. No, he's been, okay? he's had a Anthony good McFarland's pre-season. been impressive in practices yeah. and, again, has had a good summer. Uh, I asked Anthony last week uh, at Heinz Field about 
uh, about his mindset. And he gave, a, I thought, a really interesting answer when he said that if you remember in Maryland, all of his plays were big plays and he ran up those zillion yards against yeah. Ohio State and everybody got excited. He said, that was always the way I fought there. So when I didn't get big plays here right away, it was kind of discouraging. Now, with Eddie Faulkner's help and, and his teammates, they're telling him, listen, man, turn one yard into four. Right. That's what Najee Harris does. He never gets, to, you know, it's always, a, you know, three yards, four yards, seven yards. You know, and that's, that's how you get a hundred-yard rushing game. And that's what the Steelers want. That's what the Steelers, I, I mentioned this to you, we were talking about Najee Harris, uh, you know, after the Mike Tomlin press conference yeah. here, after this game. I don't know that I've ever heard him be so effusive with his praise of any rookie. It's so weird to hear it. He just, uh, he, I, he's got a love affair with this kid. <laughs> and I think he's looking at this as what this kid is going to do for this football team. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's a big part of it. You know, he's always been kind of a, a tap the brakes guy on, well, on the young players. Here, listen to yeah. listen to Tomlin's answer when I asked about Najee, and you'll see what Dale's talking about. Mike, what have you seen from Najee in terms of getting something out of nothing? It seems like even when there's nothing in front of him, he's still producing yardage. There's no question. Um, but you guys have seen that in practice settings, yes. those of you that watch us in practice. And so I don't think any of us are surprised by what we're seeing in game. Um, by the same token, it's the same things that he displayed on college tape, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we we really covered him in the draft, and so um, he's as good as advertised in that area. Before we go to break, we've been talking about guys that, have, that were positive. Uh, Jameer Jones is a name that not a lot of people know, but he made an impact in the backfield. No, wait, he made multiple impacts multiple. And, and, in the backfield. If people are, are readers, regular readers of our site, they know who he is. At least, you know, I I, I highlighted him. Um, in my preview this week, this is a guy to watch out for. He's, had, he's, he's been impactful in camp. He's a big, strong linebacker that you know played at, at Notre Dame at defensive end. Um, you know, if you're playing defensive end at Notre Dame every day in practice, you're you're playing against NFL style line, offensive, offensive linemen line, because yeah. that's what Notre Dame has been churning out yeah, yeah, yeah. over the last decade. So. This isn't going to be too big for him playing no. in, in these kind of games. And he's continually made plays. And and you saw him out there on special teams. Actually, he and Anthony McFarland had back-to-back -back tackles in the third quarter on, on special teams coverage. coverage. So, I mean, that's a great way to make this team. You saw him last week. He was behind Quincy Roche in, in, the, in the pecking order of playing, I believe. This, in this game, he was definitely ahead of him. Um, I think he's got a, a good shot to make this roster in some fashion or form. But as we've seen with the with the Schobert trade, things change quickly. Yeah, they sure you know? do. When we come back, we'll get into some of the stuff that wasn't so good. Yeah, I mean, Coach Sullivan came up to me and said, be like a jazz player. So uh, that's pretty much be smooth. And uh, that's kind of what I was trying to do today was just be smooth and a lot of players would come to me and trust in what I saw and, and let my eyes tell me and my feet tell me where to go with the ball. Jazz? Jazz? Jazz. Yeah, jazz. Jazz in what? Is it smooth? Is it improvisation? Or? Jazz is real smooth, man. You know, <laughs> you know and blues and all that stuff, man. You just pop your head and uh, snap your fingers. Welcome back. Not everything was great. They did win. Like, look, now they turned the scoreboard out. Yeah. What was it again? 24 to 16. 24 to 16, see? Uh, but not everything went great. Um, let's let's talk about the inside linebackers. Devin Bush, you got to give him a mulligan. I mean, he hadn't played the year. Yeah. Okay? And he's playing against the guy who's pretty good. And Dallas he's, Goddard's a really good tight end. Dallas Goddard also just crushed him on that 34-yard pass. It was a physical. He didn't show up on a TV replay, by the way. So this is one of those things we can share with you. Uh, from being here, but Goddard went right at he drove Bush, into it, drove into his chest, piled into yeah. him right here, shoulder to shoulder, and threw him off. Now, whether or not that's even, you know, yeah, right, legal, right? It's only illegal if you get caught. If, if, if they throw the flag, yeah. And then he cuts to his right, and by then Bush is, you know, he he, he can't catch him. Eventually, he got to him downfield, but it was thirty four yards later. Uh, neither Bush 
nor Robert Spillane, I, I thought, showed particularly well. No, and this was two weeks in a row for Spillane. I think it's no coincidence that the Steelers did make that trade for Schobert because I think they recognized that that second spot, you know, Spillane was a great story last year, mm -hmm. and he stepped in, and he's an undrafted guy and all that stuff. Oh, and he had that one big tackle in one big Nashville. Tackle. It wasn't the only play made. He had the no, interception against. He had the interception. Pick six. Pick, yeah, pick yep. six against uh, against Baltimore that essentially won them that football game mm -hmm. down there. But if you play 16 or 17 games with, with Robert Spillane out there, he's going to get exposed. Um, you know, he's a nice – Piece. He's a nice backup depth piece. He'll help you on special teams. He's an NFL player. You don't want him to be an NFL starter. Though. No, and we'll see what ends up happening uh, with Joe Schobert, uh, you know, when he arrives and anybody else that might be in the inside linebacker mix. I know every once in a while, you know, you're seeing something good out of Buddy Johnson. Uh, well, Buddy Johnson probably makes his roster on scholarship and, and you, you know, see what he is on special teams. Yeah. So it really now comes down to. Do they keep four? Do they keep five? Because now all of a sudden Spillane is a backup. You know, is, oh, and he's a backup, and, by the way. He's, he's a backup. There's no, yeah. yeah, there's no, there's no. He might can compete with no, Schoenberg. No, 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 no. no, he's going to be the backup. So now, who's that? You know, do they keep five at the inside linebacker position? And you know, is it Marcus Allen, Ulysses Gilbert, now fighting for one spot? Yeah, in that case, it's going to go to Allen because of his special teams work. You would think that's where that that tiebreaker is. Is, is you would think so. And, and, and Gilbert, to me, he's missed a couple of tackles in the first two games, uh, maybe a little bit undersized. You can always sneak those guys onto the practice squad and do things of that nature. No one's going to take them. Nobody's going to take them. I know off Steeler fans always get all upset about, oh, my God, how can you put that guy on, on, on the practice squad and expose him? Most of the time, they don't get signed. No, no. It's almost it's al almost like an unwritten agreement, too, in the NFL. Cause there actually are some decent players on practice squads around the NFL, and you don't notice a lot of movement there. Um, I, I also wasn't I, I wasn't nuts about the, the secondary play. Uh, and I'm not, I swear, saying that because of the 79-yard touchdown. Because, again, as Tomlin very eloquently stated, he said, we're working with a note card defense, was how he put it. Well, and, give, and the 79-yard touchdown was just missed tackles against the guy who runs a 4-3-5. The guy was unbelievable. I mean, actually, I can't say missed tackles because they didn't get a hand on Yeah, Quez Watkins is yeah. his name. A 4-3-5, 40, just, he took off. Uh, you know, he beat Trey Norwood. Trey, well, let's let's be okay. There, there's two sides to it too because Trey Norwood didn't take the greatest angle. Now at the same time, Trey Norwood's is he going to be thinking? Whoa, that dude! You have a study great yeah. four three five. You have a combine. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's just a dude who caught the ball. But it's you, a preseason. But game. you know, coming into this game, you know, if I'm playing in this game and I'm a young guy, I know they got Jalen Rager who can run. I yeah. know they got Quez Watkins who can speed. run. They've got guys, you know, even the first round draft pick this year. They've got guys that can run. So I, I know, and I think that's something that, that he'll learn as a young free safety. Um, that you're the last line of defense. Yeah, you can't let somebody get behind you like that. Even if you have to give some ground, you know, it's it's almost like playing in the outfield. Well, baseball. speaking of getting, you'd rather get go back and get to the fence and cut cut the ball, not let it get behind you in the gap. Well, Terrell Edmonds also let the play get behind him. He went way forward. I don't know that they that. want Terrell Edmonds, though, necessarily throwing his body around in the preseason. No, but he just went forward, like way past everything. And then Cam Sutton got held, which didn't get called. So there was more that well, went into it. You know, it. a lot of time on the, on the screen plays like that, mm -hmm. they, tell the, they tell the defensive backs, you're supposed to take on that block and allow – to get free safety to make the play on the on the receiver. Yeah, yeah. Take that, you know, we can't let that guy, we can't let those blockers come free, and then all of a sudden one of them gets the safety, or you overrun the play in the backfield, take on the blocker, make that guy make a decision, and and in that case, you know, there's just, he's I, just I, off I, to the I races. think it's going to be natural yeah. for people for fans to have a reaction of of some trepidation when they see that side of the secondary sure. getting burned because Steven Nelson isn't around and you're going to be wondering oh no is that because Nelson wasn't there and really that didn't there's, have, there's, it there's didn't. no there's no game planning for this game that yeah. that's actually the biggest point to make you, here as Tomlin said you're running straight cover two you've got a, 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 a you know, just a, and you're facing Joe Flacco you've got like no matter what you think of Flacco playing. at this stage of his career he didn't get dumber. No, he still knows how to beat cover two <laughs> And he's defense. looking yeah. at that defense going, really? Okay, I'll just do this. Yeah. I'll give it to the track star. And yeah. there he went. So, look, overall, a, 
a good progressive night for the Steelers? I mean, they, they, yeah, they, I mean, they, they I would, moved forward a little bit. I would have liked to have seen the, the, you know, some of the first team offensive linemen who were out there play a little, a little bit better. We did see a couple holding penalties. We saw one guys on, get knocked yeah. back too. We saw Chooks get knocked move. back. Rashad yeah. Coward got knocked back into Mason Rudolph uh, once. Um, you know, Philadelphia, Trey Turner, or the yeah. holding penalty. If you look at what Philadelphia does, how they build their team. They use high draft picks on defensive line and right up front. Yeah, right and offensive front. line. Yeah. That's what they believe in, and you know that's what they spend money on. I mean, they're spending a ton of money on that defensive line. We didn't even see Fletcher Cox tonight. No, but you did. You know, we would have noticed. Yeah, Fletcher you would have noticed, noticed Fletcher Cox. <laughs> you know, they, but the, look at who they spent the money on. So yeah, they put a premium on the premium on those kind of guys. I'll be interested, very interested to see next week what that offensive line looks like. In front of Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, that, that's going to tell the story, not just about left guard and Kevin Dotson versus Rashad Coward, but really the whole line. It'll and, be Kevin Dotson. And, and, and it probably will be. And you're going to see. I thought he actually played pretty well. In this and, and you're going to see Zach Banner, uh, I'm sure, too. Uh, he's, he's got another week of practice coming yeah. up here, and, and you're going to see him out there. Next week is really the big one, I mean, as, as far as preseason goes. Thanks so much for watching Steelers today. 